Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. You can also catch us on um, the Conscious Resistance Network YouTube channel and website. So today we have um, Seta Essence, who is a Reiki practitioner from Texas. And she's going to give us a little bit of uh, insight into this fascinating energy work um, that uh, can be very deeply transformational <laughs> in many people. <laughs> so, Seda, uh, tell us a little bit about Reiki and maybe you know some of the history of it. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, hello. Um, <laughs> uh, history. You want to start there? Okay. Um, well, actually, there's there's um, there's some a few different like explanations of the history of Reiki, and this is something um, like you can read up on. There's a lot of places to like online that will give you kind of a little bit different variances in the explanation of the history, um, such as um, one place is Reiki.org, and then there's a lot of really good books. So as far as history goes, um, there, I mean, supposedly it dates back before. Um, I don't know any record is so of um, of it, but it dates way back. And um, there's a there's a man named um, how do you say his name here? Let me see, because I always struggle with pronunciation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, Miku Mik Ah, sorry. Where do I have it? I have it in front of me. Um, Usui. Anyway, Doctor Usui. His first name is, starts with an M, Miku, Miku, Mikau. And he, um, he's a Japanese man who, um, that's where the history is kind of like, we're not sure exactly like how he came to wanting to learn it or understand it or like what his original um, beliefs were. But ultimately, he f refounded Reiki. He brought it back to present time. And... Um, so, <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know, it's kind of, like so, I said. So it started in Japan. Um, well, like it started before Japan, but he, um, yeah, this Japanese man um, brought it back, and Reiki is a Japanese word, actually. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, would that be considered related to the chi in Chinese medicine? Kiwa. Okay, um, yeah, the chi... Like, is the Japanese word for chi. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, for energy. So if you're, um, you know, to define Reiki, which is where I would start before I even go to history. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Reiki, like Rei, I've heard it um, explained as universal life force, um, spiritual, and then uh, energy, healing energy. It's kind of a intelligence energy, and then the key is energy is also healing energy. So, um, again, I, I mean, I've heard it called healing love energy, universal energy, um, God energy. So, um, yeah. Um, so would that be re related to um, Nikola Tesla when, when he's trying to access the universal energy, the zero point energy or radiant energy? You familiar with with his work at all? Like, um, I've heard, I don't know, um, I don't know if it would be, because I think Reiki is like a, Reiki is actually like a system, it's, it's, like I understand it's like a system of technology is in a sense, like this healing intelligence, mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. how to, so, um, you know, there's like lots of um, explanations of energy and life force and you know that we are made up of energy mm -hmm. so and then reiki is just a, um an element of it that i don't know it gives you life it gives you mm -hmm. so it's it's part of it yeah i i was probably if he's trying to explain that then it probably is connected i don't Maybe, know yeah <laughs> So, so, I, mean, I mean, there's a lot of things that humans don't know so <laughs> yeah we're trying to figure all this out so. um Actually, just I just thought of this. Um, there's a there's a mushroom in Chinese medicine. is a it's an herb uh, called the reishi mushroom. Have you have you heard of that one? The reishi mushroom, also called the uh, I think the Latin is the Ganoderma 
lucidum mushroom, um, and um, it's it's a, I guess yeah it's a Japanese Japanese mushroom, but it's um it's very powerful tonic, like um, especially for promoting longevity, you know, strengthening you know basically uh, probably all all the organs. Um, energies is very general tonic, very powerful. Also has you know anti-cancer properties and you know very powerful Im immune boosting properties. So I'm just thinking about the the word reishi, you know R E I, right? It's uh, <laughs> in the uh, beginning. So maybe that has a lot to do with the uh, like the healing, uh, the healing, the healing, yeah, the sure. healing part of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just made that connection now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. So you know, cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so what kinds of illnesses can benefit from Reiki treatment? Okay, essentially every kind of uh, illness can be benefit can benefit from Reiki and has even I don't know, I think I read that has even been proven. You know, Reiki has been proven to be effective for all and any kind of illness. So and basically how that part how that kind of works is Reiki works on all levels. Um, I mean, it, it penetrates like the levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, which are all connected. Mm -hmm. And so, and because it's this, I mean, the connective energy, I mean, it's healing energy that it can heal. It can affect every aspect. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's a pretty simple answer, but yeah. It, it, so, 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 so give me some, some like recent case or some cases that you, that you saw really were helped by your treatments. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Well, I mean, um, there's people who've come to me with structural pain for starters. Um, you know, um, like in their just, you know, neck pain or um, foot pain, and I give them Reiki for starts. And this is not an illness, but it is like an issue, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and the Reiki, um, you know, relieved that pain. And so, uh, and then, um, my, I had someone who came to me with psoriasis. Actually, we weren't sure if it was psoriasis or shingles cause they didn't get tested, but it was the rash all over their body. Mm -hmm. And that, um, after three Reiki sessions and a lot of information, um, that was received on some through the Reiki sessions, um, because, um, it just, that's something else to talk about. But um, <laughs> uh, we were able to get some information to help, um, some intuitive intuition or some intuitive information to help um, further this person, what they needed to do for themselves. And, and within three sessions, it cleared up. Mm -hmm. um, illnesses that I have experienced. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember. I haven't personally worked on um, a lot of people with like major illnesses. I've um, helped people with just different like maybe injuries, um, but I've read a lot and talked to people a lot about them helping people with who are going through cancer or cancer treatments, and they don't say that it necessarily cures. You can't say that anything cures, right? But like it, it definitely, <laughs> exactly. yeah, it you're, you're, aids. Yeah, it it aids in the um, definitely relieving a lot of the side effects or the pain or the discomfort yeah. and any of um, any of that. Um, I mean, yeah. So um, cool. Yeah. So <laughs> so um, so you said you get some some thoughts that come to you as you're in the treatment, right? So it's like, um, okay. so it's like you're in a trance, something like that, or you're just um, very focused or maybe like a meditative state. It's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's a very meditative state. And I would say like for me, um, like the way the information comes, I mean, everybody kind of receives information. Maybe some people receive it the same way a lot of people do, but you know, a lot of us differently. And for me, I receive like, um, just, I, I close my eyes and I get images of things for the, per I connect to them and, you know, I'm working on them. I'm connecting to their um, energy field and getting answers for whatever it is it, they need. And I accredit it to the Reiki, you know, giving me that information 
So, um, yeah, that's how it works for me. I, do, I get images and, you know, very visual. So, um, cool. <laughs> all right. So I guess that's a good, that's a good segue into, uh, yeah. your explanation on, on how, <laughs> oh, <Lord>. would, yeah, <laughs> how the mechanics, you know, behind a Reiki session works, especially long distance, because that is particularly what shocks people when I tell them that, you know, um, you know, a person treated my wife from many states away. They're like, what? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, so. it's pretty astounding, actually, yeah. Um, and, okay, so we were talking about um, this, and um, I'm going to go ahead and say, first of all, when you learn Reiki, which is something um, that is basically passed to you from your teacher, um, to start with that, um, you, you can learn all about Reiki, you can learn about its history, you can learn um, what it is, and you can hear all these stories, but when you actually receive Reiki, which is something you receive, is something that's called an attunement, and this is what a teacher will pass to you, and this is how you receive and open yourself to Reiki, first of all, and there's, it's um, pretty amazing because I was even reading about some people who did energy work, were really good, like, just knew how to really manipulate energy, were really good at it, had done it for years, and they um, met this guy who taught Reiki and thought probably they could do anything already that he was going to teach them, but then once he, he passed them the attunement, so it's, they were like, oh, we'll just do this, you know, to support you, whatever, and then once they received the attunements, they noticed an increase in their um, abilities, like a strong, they they had stronger energy flow coming from them, and um, so there's definitely something distinct about Reiki, hmm. Reiki energy versus just energy work. Okay, and um, and then when you learn Reiki, furthermore, there are um, there's um, there's actually well, there's levels of attunements. Okay, there's um, some people have broken it down to three levels and some people four levels. And then there's a lot of, um, um, and this is traditional Reiki that I'm talking about. There's actually a lot of, um, I've, I've been reading about all these other kinds of Reiki that are questionable. People are like coming up with these new formats of Reiki. They're like, like people, traditional Reiki or people are like, mm, I don't know about this stuff. So that's just something else to keep in mind. But, um, with these levels of Reiki, like uh, the traditional levels, level in level two is when you learn these symbols of Reiki. And these symbols um, increase your Reiki abilities. They increase your, um, yeah, they increase your Reiki abilities. And one of them, one of the symbols is a long distance Reiki symbol. It's a distance Reiki symbol. And this basically allows the energy to travel, like there's, it breaks down space and time and allows the energy to reach anywhere in the world. And so, um, and it's just really neat. It, it can reach, it can not just anywhere in the world, but you can use it for yourself, for your self-healing and like, you know, for your past and, you know, send it to your past or send it to some. So that's because um, there's no time. There's no time and space. So <laughs> now and then, um, but then I have this, awesome answer that I was telling you about. Um, <laughs> it's really complex um, answer um, I got from my sweet husband that I was going to read. If you'd like, I can go ahead and read that. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to distant Reiki, um, so in our daily life, we experience space and time into a single interwoven continuum, and we are in one place at a time. And, but when we do certain Reiki symbols, the distant Reiki symbol, we're able to connect with the spirit world or the fourth dimension, and sometimes even higher if the awareness is there. Um, and in this place, the normal space-time continuum is dislodged, and distance and time do not become a barrier. In the fourth dimension, we can access several places at once, and thus distance is only an illusion. And the energy work... Um, that we do is able to reach people wherever they might be located and 
we can also move through time and send Reiki, like I said, to our past. And then he says, mathematically speaking, we can account for up to 10 dimensions plus time, making 11. And after that, things become unstable and we're unable to scientifically vouch for anything beyond. And, and science is finally catching up with us and a string theory is attempting to explain some of these subjects and Michio Kaku is one of the guys doing this. So for all of you guys listening, I mean, if that helps um, explain it a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that, that what you said about um, science catching up because yeah. that's exactly how Chinese medicine is, um, you know, the relationship between that and um, allopathic medicine in that, um, you know, like, I remember my my teacher, uh, in when I was going when I was studying, he's a Chinese guy from, uh, from uh, he's an MD from China actually, and also an acupuncturist herbalist, and uh, and he was basically saying that there's a recent study that came out that said that showed that the um, I forget it's like I guess it's like proteins in bone are also found in the kidneys, so now there's a link between the bones and the kidneys, right? Mm -hmm. But according to Chinese medicine, we have always linked bone health to kidney function for millennia right yeah but um <laughs> but now it's validated <laughs> with um western science right yeah and right so, and so now yeah and then, we so need now, western science <laughs> yeah so now it's accepted right so uh, yeah. it's kind of sad how uh <laughs> if if it doesn't show up on the screen you know um or a blood test or something like that mm -hmm. then it's not considered to be relevant Right. Right. <laughs> you find that true? That's what people, like a lot of people, are believed or programmed to believe. Anyway, yeah, that's how we see a lot of things. If it doesn't show up, if we don't see it, it's hard. To, you can't believe it or whatever. So yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't feel that way. Of course not. <laughs> how, how can you feel like doing yeah. Reiki? You can't. I, <laughs> it's impossible to feel that way. <laughs> no, uh, I know. Like, I don't know. It's it's just crazy because. Um, you know, I came to Reiki because um, I received it, I felt it, you know, it was just an experience for me, and then so it was like, oh, wow, there's something there, you know, and then just um, being sensitive and um, open mm -hmm. to um, the possibilities of these kinds of things working, and <laughs> so... Um, I'm sure you got a lot of interesting comments, like when you tell somebody you're a Reiki practitioner, then you get like... Uh like people are in disbelief or, or they say anything <laughs> that like, like okay so I did a massage I had a massage practice you know for years before yeah. I really got into Reiki yeah. and then when I got into Reiki it was like all I wanted to do and so I was trying to tell people like my clients who were used to deep tissue like yeah. really hardcore hands-on yeah like, I was trying to explain it to them, and they're like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, Can you yeah. use, your, uh, use your elbow next uh, time, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like, oh, that's not really what I feel I want. But, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I haven't ran into a lot of opposition. I just mostly people kind of, like, um, weary, more weary than anything. But, um, yeah, <laughs> well. so they just kind of, like, give me that kind, like, sure, that's... <laughs> That's interesting, and then kind of just if, if you know, you, if shrug it away. If you're, if you're into that stuff, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, it works for somebody. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not like uh, you're saying it's better than massage. It's just different, right? It caters to different problems. Would you yeah, say? Would you, would you say it's true? Um. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I definitely. And then I think also people. It is very helpful for people to be receptive for it to really benefit them more. I mean, to work, um, um, obviously, that's anything. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, at first, when I first got into it, I was so um, uh, enthusiastic and, like, just excited. I was like, yeah, I think this is what the answer, you know, this works for everything. It's very profound, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you help people, I mean with the mental emotional aspects and then it can heal all the physical aspects and I was feeling that way and I was trying to convince people and but uh, then I kind of came back to balance and was like okay yeah massage is very good too like even though I was doing it for so long <laughs> I yeah. knew it was good but yeah. I just was so excited 
about the Reiki. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You learn, <laughs> you learn something new, you get excited about it, you know, you want to yeah. learn as much as you can in it, you know, that's, that's what my wife thinks that, um, you know, my uh, interest in voluntarism and anarcho-capitalism is just a phase. She's like, it's just a phase. I'm just waiting for you to get over it, you know. <laughs> I wonder I wonder what the next phase is going to be now. You're into this anarchy stuff. <laughs> it's kind of true, though. I mean, it is. Like, it's what's currently needed. And, like, what that was what was currently needed in my life when I first came to Reiki, you know. It's just, like, it's like this is really important right now. and mm-hmm. <laughs> We need it. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I uh, I've gotten one Reiki treatment, but a long time ago, and that was like I was at this symposium. That was like I was actually um, that's where I first found out about my college, and that's when I registered for it. But um, yeah, since then, uh, not really. But actually, I, I am interested in though um, the difference or the relationship. I think you mentioned this between like a qigong master, somebody who emits qi, and a Reiki practitioner. What what would you say the difference is between the two of those? Um, so you're talking about a qigong master emitting energy. Yeah. I've never experienced yeah. someone like a qigong. I've never experienced a qigong master. So yeah, me I'm neither. Not sure. I mean, I just read about it. <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, do you okay? Um, it, like, do you so know? When you say emitting energy, are you talking about? Like they actually do energy work to heal people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, like, like I didn't si- know that. Similar to, um, I guess, because you know, not touching the body, right? Most of the time, mm-hmm. um, and you know, able to, uh, you know, um, how do you say, emit, you know, pr- substantial mm-hmm. amounts Channel. of heat okay. from their from their hands. That actually, uh, I think I, I saw this one video where it's actually like um, registered on some. Um, device that you know yeah they're, they're emitting something powerful you know okay um if i was to define that on a personal understanding which i feel is limited because i don't know much about the qigong okay practice i have done qigong like once or twice um yeah a couple youtube videos just moving my arms and stuff it <laughs> felt good but I haven't, <laughs> I haven't like learned a lot about it uh-huh. um but um see what i understand is like reiki there's an actual like intelligence to it a a specific like intelligence that um you don't have to you all you have to do is get attuned to Reiki. You don't have to like learn how to master Reiki. You will if you practice Reiki and you use it, it will get stronger in you and you will learn a lot because it's it's an intelligence and it gives you intelligence. And so um and that's been my experience and um everyone I know who does it's experience actually does it. Um but so with Qigong, I mean, if you're just, like, learning how to manipulate energy uh, alone, um, which, you know, you can do through a lot of martial arts and you can do um, through meditation alone, um, I, would, I, would, I would just, I would imagine that that's just learning how to manipulate energy, which we can all do very easily. And then, but then Reiki versus Reiki, Reiki is this actual, like, intelligent, technology type of energy that's coming in for healing specifically Mm -hmm. to positively charge you know any kind of negative spaces in in our energy fields and um and also just um i don't know it's interesting because you can use reiki for so many things like you can charge um and (laughs) uh you learn this with experience and i say you can charge you can charge like I've done, I've used it for like traveling, for example, like sat and visualized the Reiki going ahead of me in my journey that I'm going on. Hmm. And, um, and then what I experience when I actually sit down and focus on doing something like this, um, is my whole trip just super smooth and even little amazing little things happen during the trip. And I'm like, whoa, you know, that was totally Reiki. And, you know, this is just one example. But uh, versus when I don't sit down and do it, the trip might not go as smooth. It might not, you know, like be as pleasant or whatever. So 
Nice. (laughs) Yeah, it's really, (laughs) really interesting. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, mean, you could also, I guess, interpret that as, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, we we uh, construct our own destiny according to you know how we see ourselves and you know how we see ourselves in the future. You know, like uh, and therefore success is not necessarily an accident, but just a matter of perspective and you know a, a perspective of yourself and how you see yourself playing out <laughs> and, and it's just a matter of well, achieving. there's that yeah there's that but I didn't even do that all I did was send Reiki like yeah. with the symbols you know what I mean so I, this is the difference like mastering what you're explaining which is sitting down and really mm-hmm. focusing on the energy and like manipulating with your visions and with your um, you know your um, mm-hmm. just yeah all that work versus Reiki you don't have to you just get out of the way you just send it and it does the work for you <laughs> so I don't know that's how cool. I would differentiate it because right. even when I when I give Reiki and when I started learning Reiki like from the beginning like level one um, you know I didn't even feel a lot going on like you're you'll start feeling different things in your hands as you get better at it but in the beginning I didn't really feel much and I was working, that reminded me, like, I wanted to tell you, I was remembering as we were talking, like, one um, one other incident, so I was working on someone who was having thyroid problems, um, and they weren't sure exactly, they hadn't gotten a full diagnosis, but it, they knew they were having thyroid problems, so I was working on them with the Reiki, and, they, and it got better, and, we, and then when they went, you know, it just got better, like, and I worked on them every week, mm-hmm. and um, so... But this is when I just started Reiki, and I didn't even, I was still learning, you know, and it was like, cool. didn't have to know, you know, it just worked. Yeah. So this is the difference, like, a Qigong master, I imagine, is like someone who's really mastering, mm-hmm. you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> and there is such a thing as a Reiki master, but usually that comes, you know, after a while of really practicing and learning and mastering it, so... So, so you keep mentioning these different um, levels, right? Level one, yes. two. So, so, so can you explain what those different levels like entail? Um, kind of. I mean, <laughs> you, I mean, with like summarizing it, yes. Um, basically, like level one is considered the like physical level of healing, and when you learn level one, Reiki level one, um, and you get attuned, um, it's just, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think of a, the best way to really explain this, but um, and without that's just it. Like you, you can use this. Uh, you can use it on yourself, and you can use it on others. Um, but it's just very basic level one physical healing. We're just, and I don't know. Like for me, <laughs> I have a hard time saying it's just physical because I believe everything is connected, regardless. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. and then when you go on to level two, it's supposedly mental emotional healing so and this is when like when you're learning reiki your intuition abilities increase or your psychic abilities as they call them sometimes increase they get stronger um and um and then level three they call the soul level healing um which also um is the level where you become a master or a teacher First, a teacher, then a master of Reiki. So that's when you start to learn how to teach it. So, um, wow. Yeah. So how how do you know like what level you're on? Like you can just well, sense you, it intuitively, or no? You take you get attuned to each of these levels. So you take like the classes individually. Yeah. And um, you like there's and I mean there are people who will teach all three in one at once, like in a row, mm-hmm. combine them in a sense. But they are. Um, but then there are people who will teach it individually, and it's just the point of getting these attunements with these intentions and taking it deeper each time, learning more about it. Like I said, in level one, you don't learn the symbols; you just learn. You just learn about like main, mainly the history, um, what it is, and um, you learn about the different levels. But you don't learn them. You get attuned, and then you start practicing. And level two is when you, uh, again, you learn more, you learn the symbols, um, and you get attuned again, and then um, you practice it, get stronger, and this is my experience, and then level three, you learn even more, you learn more symbols, you learn how to teach it, you learn how to pass attunements, and um, 
and each time you experience personally personal healing that just keeps going deeper and deeper with it as well so cool yeah so uh, so so just can you walk us through a, a typical treatment like like I, I assume most of the time you're not touching the patient right uh, actually, yeah, you do most of the time touch the patient. Oh, you do? So, okay. See? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, most, it's, a, it's, it's considered a healing touch okay. a lot of times. Um, uh, light touch, you don't have to touch uh, for it to work. Like we were talking about long-distance Reiki. Mm. But even in a session, it, I mean, you still don't have to touch um, with or without that distant Reiki healing symbol. Um, and usually, um, you work, you, you just basically place your hands lightly, um, in the shot in the chakras of the person and, um, channel through the chakras, um, which are, there's basically seven main chakras, but there's a lot more than that. And throughout our body and they're, you know, I don't know if you know what chakras are, but they're the main, uh, like energy source points in our body mm. you know um and so uh you know there's lots of charts out there if, if any of your viewers don't know what that is just look up chakras c-h-a-r-k-r-a-s chakras and you can see and learn so much about chakras but yeah um but, but, but chakras is mainly like an indian concept right ayurvedic medicine or or yoga or something like that all right would you say I actually don't know the origin. I probably okay. <laughs> that's probably I don't know. Um, okay, <laughs> just an aside. I thought you would know that because I don't know. Like, um, it's just used in so many different. Um, I, I mean, I just see it like from different angles, but I don't know the exact origin. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it used. I in reflexology. Mm -hmm. I've seen chakras. You know, um, I don't know, yeah, like just I, individually and. Huh? No, I'm just saying. I, I think I think it yeah, has roots in uh, ancient Indian healing traditions. Okay. So, yeah. Um, somewhere in the east, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, and then you, and then you know, if the person has specific areas, problem areas, you will obviously lay your hands on those areas as well. Focus on those areas individually as well. Um, so wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, yeah, just all fronts, you know, if you're laying on the table, um, you know, and you stay fully clothed, and you just lay there and relax and basically go into a meditative state while the practitioner um, moves around, placing their hands on different parts of your body to channel the energy, and, um, and yeah, you can do both sides of the body, front and back, and just anywhere, so. So, yeah. so from the patient's perspective, what would they be feeling what, what, what should yeah yeah what could they be feeling well definitely deeply relaxed um uh, you can feel you'll feel different things i've heard people say they feel tingling <clears throat> um warmth um i've worked on i've worked on people that actually do kind of go in a trance sometimes and also get a lot of visuals themselves <laughs> so cool. um yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the deep relaxation is the main thing. Is what you're, you know, when you put the body in that deep relaxed state. That's another way that Reiki really helps. It puts you in a meditative state so that you can experience deeper levels of healing. So, so, I, so I assume that's uh, that can complement like. Um shamanism right like oh yeah. yes definitely it complements shamanism it, it complements probably any any kind of healing modality i would imagine i i see that and i've heard that yeah <laughs> yeah so, so have you told some uh i guess what you, you said you're not really uh that much into doctors as a, as i am as i'm not either but um <laughs> have you told any uh any uh medical doctors that you're a reiki practitioner or uh gosh <laughs> I'm like, have I seen a medical doctor? Like, <laughs> like they, they, they don't exist. Become, they, they don't exist to yes, us. Yes, <laughs> I've become a. <laughs> well, actually, 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 that's doctor. another good question. How about your kids? So, do you, I assume you, uh, you you treat your kids a lot? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, 
Like they're asking me for it. Can you give me Reiki? My foot hurts. Can really? Really? <laughs> yes, yes. They feel it. They like it. It works. It's amazing. Um, and even like, okay, there's the minor incidences when they have little aches, and then there's major incidences when you know if they've fallen or one time uh, my son got stung um, by a wasp twice, Ooh. and um, and so. Yeah, um, I was putting the Reiki on the stings, and he, but you know, he would move my hands around. It's pretty neat. Children are um, really sensitive, and they will move you. Like I want to hear, I want to <laughs> like that's what he was doing. So, um, and after about thirty minutes, the he didn't feel it anymore. The stinging. So, but, wow. So yeah. I don't know if that's a lot or not, but <laughs> he was pretty traumatized by the two stings. He was, I think, four, three or four. Wow. So that's, uh, yeah, that's definitely painful for little ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember a uh, really quick story. I was outside. I remember uh, in uh, in the garden, my, my parents' house, and um, I was walking on the grass, and then I stepped on something soft. And it turned out to be a um, a hive, a beehive that was in the ground. <laughs> I don't understand how that could happen, but yeah, it was in the ground. And so I got stung once, and then <laughs> yeah, so they all came out, right? I got stung once, started running, got stung again, came, ran to the door, got stung a third time. <laughs> ouch! <laughs> they were following me. It's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, ouch. Yeah. Oh, well, you're lucky you didn't get stung more. Yeah, I guess yeah. not. Right? <laughs> With one step, that's crazy. Like. I know, and I, I remember feel. I remember feeling like, wow, this is a soft area. Like, what? What is this? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Immediately, they just came out. Ouch! <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, I guess uh, you know, allergies. Uh, you know, um, like allergic reactions to bees. <laughs> that's yeah. That's uh, something that uh, I'm kind of lucky. Not. To <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I've only I've been stung like probably hundreds of times when I was a kid. And wow, hundreds of <laughs> times! Was, oh my god! I just like I felt that way. I mean, it was a lot, and we lived in the mountains, and there was uh, we lived in old houses. We'd move around, but this one in particular, like there was always a wasp in the house, always, wow. and yeah. like especially my room, and like <laughs> it was dark yeah. wow. wood walls, dark wood floors. And there were these dark brown wasps. So you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't see them. And all of a sudden, you're stepping on it. And, like, uh, <laughs> or all of a sudden, I don't know, they just come out of nowhere. And, like, um, just one time, like, I never had I mean, major reactions. You swell up normally. But um, one time, I was at a um, friend's house, and I stepped on a bee, and I freaked out. And it was the one time in my life I got allergic reaction mm -hmm. and we had to go to the, get a Benadryl shot or something because I was breaking out in hives. Wow. And they basically, my dad said it was because he wasn't there to calm me down like he always was. Hmm. So, you know, that reaction made a difference. Like when I couldn't calm down, I broke out in hives. Wow. So it was, yeah, just so that makes a difference. Just reminded me of, um, since I'm an acupuncturist, I had a teacher who specializes in uh, five elements acupuncture, which is a tradition of uh, acupuncture very closely related to psychotherapy. So she focuses mainly on, you know, emotional healing. Yeah. Have you yeah. heard? Of, have you heard of that? Five element acupuncture. It's I it's it's really uh, interesting, and she taught. <laughs> she she was my ethics teacher, but she she like took a couple of classes to teach us that, which is pretty cool, and I learned a lot about it, <clears throat> and. Um, and I mean, she does, she does, you know, acupuncture too, but it's mainly talk. Like she, 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 I remember her saying like, you know, we put the needles in and she's like, the problem with acupuncture is you just put the needles in and then you go away and you leave the patient alone. Why don't you talk to the patient? That's perfect time to talk to the patient. <laughs> so she sits down while they have the needles in and she just talks to them. And, uh, and, and that's, it's fascinating because, um. So, so she also does. Uh, what reminded me of this was she also does bee venom acupuncture. H have you heard of that? About that? Mm -mm. That's fascinating. And actually, uh, she wrote a book about it called um, "Bee in Balance." B e e, bee in balance. Nice. <laughs> and uh, and and this yeah, fascinating book. 
And so it's, um, I'm not sure how old it is. I think it's pretty old therapy. But um, so basically um, the venom um, is like an immune uh, stimulant. So it stimulates the immune system. In case, especially effective for autoimmune disorders, right? So, uh, so very severe cases of multiple sclerosis, um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, problems where the immune system is attacking the body, and uh, and so they do intentional bee stings in uh, those affected joints, and it brings about a very uh, dramatic healing response, right? And uh, you know, it. I guess it it is painful. For the people, but they get relief from from the joint pain, and also she was. She, I remember her telling me that you know people who are wheelchair bound, like <laughs> they get so much improvement that wow. they can you know start walking eventually again. So it's really it's really fascinating the the um, the healing benefits of uh, <laughs> like bee venom. You never think of like yeah, bee venom, right. <laughs> Wow, like, yeah, I've never heard of that. That's pretty impressive. And actually, um, towards the end of our stay in that old farmhouse where I got stung so often, like the last few times I got stung, I didn't react at all. I mean, it was like I became immune to them. Yeah, wow. And I've often wondered, you know, like with ant, ant bites that I get so much of here in Texas. <laughs> Ant bites. Really? Oh, shoot. Fire ants are everywhere. Oh, oh my God. Yes. You can't go outside barefoot without getting bit. It's crazy. So, wow. Yeah. So, um, but I've often wondered also just about this. I don't know. I think they're bites or stings. I think they bite. I don't know. But I've wondered about them, like, um, in that in that respect mm -hmm. of, of acupuncture mm -hmm. and thinking, you know, I are they helping us? Like, I wonder if that's, like, sometimes it's helping us. So that's very interesting to hear that, that they are actually using it to help people uh, with, in that respect. Yeah, yeah. So, so, of course, you know, every time the bee stings, it, it dies, right? Because the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the stinger pulls out, all the entrails go out with the stinger. And so, and so you see it, like, um, you know, pulsating and going deeper, you know, with the venom. And, uh, and, and it's amazing, yeah, how that is such a powerful healing um, substance for, for, for us, you know, for certain types of people, right? It's just that is very and, amazing. And, and, so, and so what she would do is she would tell them, you know, especially with people who really need it frequently, she would tell them, you need to um, raise your own bees and do it yourself. So, so, you know, there's a certain way that you can, you know, grow bees um, uh, like in some kind of jar, you know, with a, with a, a sponge and some honey and everything. And, uh, and you just raise them yourself. And then you, you know, with a tweezer, you, you get one and you <laughs> sting yourself. You sting yourself. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's kind of sad. Some people, some people, uh, get disturbed because every time you do it, the bee dies. So it's like, you know, um, it's kind of, uh, some people have issues with that, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I mean, the way she describes it, it's like, it's like in our body, you know, we are one functioning organism and we have, you know, billions or trillions of cells that constantly are dying all the time, right, and creating new ones, right? But, but all of them um, result in a, um, in a functioning, one, one functioning organism, right? right. So uh, in that sense, you know, the, the, the hive is a functioning organism. <laughs> but uh, I could definitely see how some uh, sociopathic people can relate that to governments and say, you know, people, <laughs> you know, all for one, one for all kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. But that's how, that's how, you know, she, uh, um, you know, I guess validated it, you know, described it. So <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is very interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. I definitely want to, I, I would be interested in getting into it, but uh I don't know about having bees know. around me all the time. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure accidentally, you know, somebody who does bee venom acupuncture would, you know, accidentally get stung every once in a while as well, you know, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a drawback. Um so so let me just ask you one last question. Um mm -hmm. so um if someone were searching for a Reiki practitioner like what criteria could they use to um, you know discern a good practitioner from a um, 
you know, from a <laughs> not so good <laughs> one. What would you say? What, what, what like, how, how can they tell, or what questions could they ask, or things like anything like that? Or you just have to, you just have um, to have the experience to, 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 to know, I guess, right? I think, like, with that kind of question, I think the answer is um, is pretty universal for when you're seeking any kind of practitioner for, you know, you first of all, if you can get a referral, you know, that's always helpful. But even then, sometimes I've referred people to people and they don't quite resonate. You know, that person may have helped me a lot, but they didn't really help the other person because they didn't quite resonate their, um, their, they were just very different. Their energies were very different. So you want to resonate with the person and you can, um, you can find out if you do, you know, in a phone conversation, how well do you communicate? You can, you know, I've, um, recently, um, uh, assisted a friend in teaching a Reiki class and uh, this guy just found her online. She has a website, um, and she has some videos, and he watched her videos, and um, he just felt like he really resonated with her, and he wanted to learn from her. So, um, you know, you know, whenever someone's talking about what they do, when if they're talking about, I do Reiki, you know, is it making sense what they're saying to you? Is it resonating? It's like, do you feel it? Does it feel right? You always want to like follow that. Does it feel right? I think that that's important um, in all the decisions we make in our life. When, and if we're definitely, if we're going to seek seek healing um, assistance from someone, you know, do, do they feel right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. my best answer. That's a good for, answer. That's a good answer. Yeah. Because, because um, <laughs> You know, in all professions, there's good apples and bad apples, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. like it's like because a uh, because a Chinese, um, you know, acupuncturist in Chinatown who doesn't speak English hurt you. You know, all acupuncturists are bad, right? Right. No, <laughs> people, yeah. People make that kind of generalization, right? And it's kind of sad right. because you're missing out on a pretty good, um, you know, experience that you might have had with with other people that are yes. that are more gentle, that are more. Uh, you yeah. know, more compassionate, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so it's definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, I would, yeah, definitely say that as well. That if you can get a referral to somebody, you mm -hmm. know, somebody can speak highly of another person, then that's a good indication. That's that. always helpful. Yes, Excellent. always helpful. And um, yeah, and um, you know, if there's ever information on that person before you meet, if you don't get to meet them before the session, if there's some kind of information or testimonies online or some kind of blog i mean read it feel it out how does it sound to you does it sound like this person knows what they're talking about um or does it sound like they're a total whack job because there's definitely those guys i mean i mean uh and then like the whole point of there being um different forms or all these new reiki um techniques that are coming out and are pretty questionable um you know maybe Maybe some of them are legit, but um, I don't know. I haven't done a lot of research on them or experienced them. And then um, the more I've read from people who are into traditional Reiki, they're questioning them too and saying, well, maybe these people have some um, you know, legitimate uh, intentions for helping and healing, but you know, is it really Reiki? You know, what are you really you know, you might go get something out of it, but is it really Reiki? And then there's even this claim that you can pass attunements on the internet. And there's these crazy, like, I was just reading this. There are these people who are, like, offering things through eBay where you can uh, you can bid on stuff like this. And I'm just like, <laughs> really? this doesn't seem like a very, I don't know, or like really low prices. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> like, if it's really legit. I don't know. Like, you got to... That's just, what I would watch out for. Just send me you your know? money. I'll email yeah. you the attunement. It's in, yeah, it's in the attachment. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You gotta go. Uh, I don't know about this. <laughs> so once 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 the money clears, I'll send you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's funny. So when you're looking at Reiki, you know those are kinds. Of, you know, you always want to be sure. aware of those kinds of 
like possible scams that are out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why, you know, to, if you're just looking up somebody online, it's definitely harder than getting a referral, um, you know, to know. Yeah, definitely. You know. Yep. Uh, good answer. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Seda, for this interview. I appreciate it. Um, so if there's anything else you want to finish up with and any website you have or videos that you make or, you know, if, if people want to get a Reiki treatment from you, you know, where would they reach you? Um, well, I, um, where would you reach me? <laughs> Actually, I guess you could find me on Facebook as Seta Essence. You can message me there. I, um, I haven't really developed any kind of websites, um, at this point. I've been thinking a lot about it, but, um, because I primarily focus on homeschooling my children, I just haven't <laughs> worked on developing <laughs> My business as much. I get referrals, and then I have some people that I see regularly. But, um, yeah, if you wanted to come see me, yeah, you can message me on Facebook. And I'd also like to include, um, I don't know if you, you attach links to this video. Oh, yeah, definitely, in the um, description, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I will um, include some links to where you can look up more information on Reiki. Yep, cool. Yeah, yeah. and books that I would recommend. Yeah. So anything, we can include any, that. Yep. Anything you want to send me, I'll put it in the description. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, Seda. <laughs> You're welcome. So this is um, this is peaceful anarchism, uh, the Voluntary Virtues Network, and the Conscious Resistance Network. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Bye.